Those days, the original Happy Days went on Love America style. Love America style, truer than the red, white, and blue. Love America style, truer than the red, white, and blue. That's me and you. I, uh, I guess this is good night then. Uh huh. I had a nice time anyway. Who is it? Oh. It's okay, Ma. It's me. I'm with Richard. Stand over here and I'll stand on the other side. I guess this is... Uh, good night now. <laughs> and that was the end of that. But, if one waits long enough, ideas come around. One, George two, Lucas three, is making a movie called American Graffiti. They say Ron Howard could play 50s. Don't you have film on that? I said, yeah, I shot up the pilot. Ron Howard is playing in the 50s. George Lucas looked at the pilot, they hired Ron Howard. American Graffiti takes place in 1962, but it's really all about the end of the 50s. And American Graffiti was just an amazing surprise hit. It just played and played and played. A wonderful show on Broadway called Grease. And suddenly, the geniuses in television said, all these 50 things, don't we have one of these on the shelf? They said, Gary, where is that thing? And out I brought it, and they say, well, not quite good enough, but let's remake it. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock, we're going to rock. Around the clock tonight, take the glass back, go on, join me, hon. My friend lied to everybody about a girl. Oh, well, it's obvious that uh, the lie is bothering him, and he ought to go back and tell the truth. To everybody? I mean, even Fonzie? What's a Fonzie? What Michael Eisner and Tom Miller wanted was uh, a gang, because there was a gang in American Graffiti. They wanted this mean gang. And I didn't have room for a gang, so I kind of said, I'll give you one guy who's a gang himself. Hey, have you seen Potsy around? Oh, great. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll see you, Fonzie. I made a promise to myself I would never comb my hair. I would never wear a garrison belt. I would never have, like, uh, cigarettes or anything in my sleeve. And I would never chew gum. Because every actor who played that kind of character did that. The director said to me, it says here you got to go to the mirror and comb your hair. I said, oh, please don't make me do that. Please, I, I made a promise that I would never comb my hair. He said, I I'm so sorry, you you've got to. And I thought, oh my Lord, what am I going to do? I resigned myself, I walked up to the mirror, I took out the comb and I went, whoa, I don't have to because it's perfect. And I was being true to myself and I was being respectful to what was written and the Fonz was born in that moment. Baby, 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 blah, 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 blah. No. That was me blowing in your ear. Richie was Ron. He really was Ron. We saw his first date, his first gambling experience, his first drinking experience. All we had was some beer and teeny weeny glasses. How many teeny weeny glasses did you have? 72. <laughs> I think it's time for some teeny weeny cups of coffee. It was my coming of age story. The irony was, in my life, and in the lives of Donnie and Anson and, and Henry, we were, we were sort of undergoing that. How far did you get? All I'm saying is Mary Lou's a nice girl. You didn't get very far. Lay off, Potsy, will you? Okay. In the early years of the show, Richie and Potsy were, were more the focus, and Fonzie and I were sort of peripheral characters. Doesn't look like a hickey. Of course it doesn't look like a hickey. You can't walk around with teeth marks on your neck. Suppose your old man sees him. Tony, in the, in the beginning years, didn't have much. It was a bleep in and out. And, uh, you know, smart aleck remarks. Here's your nickel. What's the secret? You got home at 2 o'clock last night. That's no secret. It is the dad. <laughs> You're cruising for a bruising, kid. Oh, yeah? You'd have to catch me first. Gary Marshall learned what we could do. And the writers wrote for us. <laughs> Richie? Don't you find it a little hard staring this way? Hey, we have nice seats. Isn't that great? Here we were getting a 70s look at a 50s family. What do you plan to do when you get out of school? Well, I was thinking I, I might become a cop. I mean, it's the only job I know where they pay you to drive a motorcycle. <laughs>
we thought we had come up with this great character called Fonzie. And what happened was the network suddenly said, we don't like this Fonzie character. Fonzie's a hood. Dear, I don't like to hear you talk like that. He drives a motorcycle, and motorcycle drivers are hoods. The network didn't want him in a leather jacket because that leather jacket implied all that tough world. So he was in a little gabardine windbreaker. It's a wonder they didn't have a bunch of little pencils there. So I wrote a letter to the network saying, here's what we'll do. Only when he rides the motorcycle, he'll have a leather jacket. Fonzie's not so bad. He's probably got a good heart underneath all that leather. Fonzie got his jacket back, and then I wrote another memo. Writers never, ever in any scene let Fonzie be without his motorcycle. The windbreaker that Fonzie wore, I threw in a dumpster on the Paramount lot. The leather jacket he wore is in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, and that's absolutely true.